Welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Bianca, and on this channel, we usually go through simple homemade recipes, but today I'm gonna be sharing our birth story of our first child. Now, this is 13 months later that I'm recording this. The recording you're gonna be listening to, we recorded that two weeks after giving birth. And you'll hear myself and Chris tell his mother, my mother-in-law, Mary, our birth story. In my opinion, it's a great dialogue where we're able to share from kind of start of labor to getting home after the birth center. What happened, the good, the bad, the ugly of it all. I think a big reason why I feel the need to share my birth story is because throughout my pregnancy and leading up to birthing my first child, I watched so many YouTube videos stemming from home birth all the way to hospital. I looked at C-section, all different types of birth. I watched YouTube videos and I found it very helpful to see different perspectives, to see different experiences, and it really prepared me for my own birth. I know there's gonna be a lot of opinions on what should have happened, what this person should have done, that person should have done or shouldn't have done, but I'm at peace with everything. I'm grateful that we got through it. Before we jump into the audio, I just wanna give a little background and timeline to this. So my husband and I got married kind of young in 2016. I wanna make sure we have everything stable before we bring another life um, into this world. So we waited quite a few years before um, March, 2021, where I stopped taking birth control. We were kind of trying, um, but towards um, like August, September, I started getting like antsy of, okay, I need to start tracking my ovulation. And even before that happened, um, I got pregnant. So that was the end of September, 2021. I found out very early October, 2021. Unfortunately, two weeks after I found out, I miscarried. Um, maybe I'll do a separate video on that because there's a lot to dissect in that. Now looking back on it, it feels like just a little blip, but in the moment, um, it is very scary. Uh, there's a lot of mental pieces that come into play because you don't know what the future holds. Um, and also there was a lot of anxiety for me in spiraling. So I had my miscarriage in October. I knew that I had to kind of recover from that. And even though I was only six weeks, and see, this is where a lot of the stigma, taboo, everything surrounding miscarriage of, oh, you were only six weeks, it's fine. No, 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 like <laughs> you were pregnant. That was a lot to go through. I knew I needed to recover. I started going to therapy that following year, which I still go to therapy. I love therapy, I go once a month, and it's really helped me dissect that scenario. Um, and it really helped me during my pregnancy with my first, just try to keep my anxiety as low as possible. January, February, I started tracking my ovulation and it started getting very obsessive and then in May, when I was talking to my therapist, she told me, hey, just stop tracking your ovulation, chill out. You weren't tracking it fully when you got pregnant the first time, just stop. Like, just go cold turkey, stop it. And of course, when she told me that, I got pregnant. Um, <laughs> it's weird how things happen. I got pregnant again May 2022 with a due date of February 2023. Now, throughout that whole pregnancy, I was anxiety ridden. Even when I got to the 12 week mark, everyone says you're good now. Um, even when I was in my third trimester, I still had anxiety and it was every day of just, I would get myself out of it sometimes, but sometimes I couldn't and it was just constant spinning of, is this baby gonna make it? Are we gonna have to, deal with something more traumatic. It was very difficult to go through 10 months of thinking that I wasn't going to have my child in my arms breathing. Uh, so it, it, my pregnancy was very difficult um, mentally. Now physically, fortunately, 
I didn't have too much nausea. I was still able to physically do things. Of course, the energy levels are a bit off um, when you're pregnant, but overall, physically, I was good. It was the mental piece and the emotional piece that really took a toll on me. Fortunately, like I said, I went to therapy. My husband's a great support where he understood um, and I would explain my feelings to him and he would empathize with it and try to help me as much as he could. Um, but once I had my son, you'll hear in the audio, like just so much relief happened. So in this audio, I show different pictures just from the birth um, and right after birth that I'll share in the audio. A lot of the pictures are maternity pictures, which I'm wearing a blue dress. I will put the Instagram name of our friend and photographer. She did an amazing job. Other pictures are from the baby shower, random pictures of us wearing mom and dad shirts. So you'll see those in between, but then you'll also see a couple pictures of during birth. Um, no graphic pictures of delivery. You'll just see snapshots of faces and then a couple pictures that evening. I hope you enjoy this audio. Um, I always listen back to it and I feel empowered. If you have any questions or comments, nice comments, not, not rude comments, let me know in the comments below and I hope you enjoy. It was Saturday night, so I was cramping from 10.30 to 2 a.m., but then they, they went away after that. They weren't really consistent at all. Then Sunday, um, I started having actual contractions and then I had like that bloody show oh, yeah. um, at 3 a.m. And then um, I had the bloody show and the mucus plug at 9 a.m. that morning. And then on Monday, uh, so like this was like a several day process before we even got to the birthing center. So then on Monday, I had light contractions throughout the day. And then the night contractions were a bit more. And I think at that point I had to start sitting in this chair to go to sleep and like oh. sitting up. Um, and then starting on Monday, like Sunday into Monday and then Monday into Tuesday, like I was sitting here sleeping and Chris was in the bed and he would just wake up for work and be like, okay, bye. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, okay. I'm just having contractions. Like I didn't really like make a big deal out of it at all. Um, so he just thought it was like a normal day and okay, Bianca's going to be at home with her mom and, and oh, that's yeah, how it's going to go be. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so then on Monday we had our appointment at the birthing center and I was 40 weeks in one day. And so I'm like, I at least need a centimeter because at that point they said, if I'm at least a centimeter, they could do a membrane sweep mm -hmm. and progress labor. And I didn't want to go to like 41 weeks because then they start doing a bunch of tests mm -hmm. to try to like push labor so you could have it at the birthing center um but then once you hit 42 weeks you have to go to the hospital oh, okay. so like i really did want to get even to the point of 41 weeks so i was like i at least need a centimeter so that i could get a membrane sweep if it's just a centimeter and we could go from there and so she checked me and I was three centimeters. Oh. So I was so excited. And <laughs> she was, cause she asked, do you want to do the membrane sweep? And I was like, well, let's see how far along I am. And we could kind of go from there. Because if it, if I was even three centimeters, it was like, okay, like I'm doing something. Like I'm progressing. I don't really need a membrane sweep. Like we're, that hurts. I heard it. Yeah, I heard it yes. hurts. I also heard that the cervical checks hurt they didn't feel like anything to me. So I was like preemptively thinking everything was going to hurt when in reality, at least the cervical check didn't hurt. And then I didn't have to Did get it. Oh, they didn't do the memory? No. So she was like, no, you're three centimeters. And I was like, oh, like I <laughs> freaked out. Um, and she looked at me and she was like, no, like I think you're on the right track. Like let's not – do the membrane sweep because there's a possibility that I could break your water on accident. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, okay, cool. So that was Monday. Um, and then the night contractions were getting pretty intense. And I looked at my phone and I took a screenshot of like the timing of them. Mm -hmm. And it was like six minutes, 11 minutes, 15 minutes, five minutes, like just the spacing mm -hmm. between all of them. 
So I was like, yeah, no, that there's nothing there. Okay, so Tuesday. Tuesday was the 14th. The 14th. Yeah, so we had, or I had more intense contractions throughout the day. Um, and then, like, just mucus the whole day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that night we were eating dinner and we were watching TV and stuff. And I was sitting on the ball having contractions. And I just, like, felt in my bones like I'm not gonna make it through the night like (laughs) sleeping wise like this is it um and that Tuesday Chris came home from work kind of early and then I lay I tried to lay down to take a nap at like four o'clock and I was laying there and it was like every probably five minutes I would have a contraction and he was playing his game and it got to like six o'clock and I was getting so irritated because I wanted to lay there and just chill. But I was like, the dogs need to be fed. I haven't heard like their little bowls clink. Uh-huh. Chris hasn't checked on me and I'm over <laughs> here having intense contractions. Like I was, I was kind of angry at him, but like he had no clue. Cause I was just like, Oh yeah, I had contractions last <laughs> night. Like I didn't tell him like the intensity was getting there. Uh-huh. So then I texted him while I was in bed and I was like, come to the room once you're done. He never came to the room. (laughs) My mom comes upstairs. She goes, do you want me to feed the dogs? He was like, uh, yeah, I guess. She was like, okay, well, food's ready too. And he was like, okay, we'll be down in a second. So we both end up downstairs and, uh, she went to the bathroom real quick. I looked at him and I said, you need to clock in. (laughs) That's what I told him. I was like, you need to clock in. He was like, oh, okay. And I was like, you didn't check on me. The dogs weren't fed. It was six o'clock. Like, we need to get stuff done. And you need to check in. And then my mom came back. And then we we kept eating. And then we went upstairs. And I kept saying, you need to check in. Like, it is time. Like, (laughs) get it together. And he was like, okay. So he did all the things I asked him to do. And then that night... It was like I couldn't go to sleep at all, at all. Um, so I started. That was Tuesday night. That was Tuesday night, yeah. Okay. And then I started um, timing contractions. I want to say around midnight, mm-hmm. um, and that's where they started getting pretty consistent. Um, later, I found out that I was not timing them correctly. Um, I was timing them from when they started to when the pain was manageable for me. Instead of when my stomach felt soft again. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I thought you're supposed to time them from when one starts to the next one starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, on the app, you say start, like, when you're... Oh, when the contraction starts. Start, and then you click end when it ends. Oh, and then okay. And then the app does, like, all the timing, spacing stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, like, I was counting, okay, it's starting. And then when it was manageable, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm good. But you're supposed to wait till your stomach is soft. Yeah. Oh. So, like, the timing was, like, 45 seconds. That's how I was timing them. Later to find out that when the doula came, she was like, oh, yeah, they were lasting, like, a minute, minute and a half at that point. Mm. Um, so that was that was a fault on mine where, like, I just didn't know, I guess. Well, that's a new thing. Yeah. I mean, it used to just be used time from the start of one to the start of the next one. Yeah. And then when that gets to, like, less than five minutes, then you go to the hospital. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was on me. So how far apart were your contractions at night? Uh, six minutes. Oh, okay. But I was, like, 45 seconds and then six minutes. 45 seconds long, six minutes apart. But in reality, they were... Like a minute, minute and a half long, uh-huh. Uh-huh. six so, minutes apart. So less than. Yeah, yeah. So you, if it was a minute and a half. So did you get to sleep at all? No, not a wink. The only time I slept was that four o'clock piece, but I kept waking up because of the the contractions. Mm. Um, so then at like two o'clock, I woke Chris up and I was like, hey, like, we got to figure out what we're doing. Like, go get the, the yeah, pack the car, uh, get the mid, get the food. Yeah, call the midwife and just let them know this is what it is. So Chris did good and he did all that. 
and he was ready. Like, he started the car. Like, he was ready to go. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, we got to, like, ask the midwife. The midwife was like, hey, probably just chill at the house for a couple more hours. Um, call us back. Oh, she talked to you on the phone. Mm-hmm. And then she wanted to talk to me. Mm-hmm. Because she wanted to see if she would catch me in a contraction. Uh-huh. Um, that's oh, pretty... see if you could talk through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like... I was able to talk through it at that point. Oh, then but, she said stay home. <laughs> yeah, she was like, okay, well, what about your doula? And I was like, okay, well, I could call my doula and see if she could come um, to the house and we could go from there and we'll call you back if we're on our, our way. Mm-hmm. She said, okay, yeah, just call me because it was just the on-call midwife. Okay. And that was the girl that checked me when I was three centimeters. Okay. And she was my number one. So, like, what happens at the birth center is – you don't know who's going to be on the shift. Right. So whoever you get is who's going to be delivering your baby. Yeah. Um, so that girl was my number one. Okay. And during that appointment, when she checked me three centimeters, she said, oh, I'm on call tomorrow night. So maybe I'll see you. <laughs> so I was like, let's go. Like, I was so excited because I really liked her. Um, so she said, hey, I'm on call, whatever. Just let me know how the doula stuff goes and we'll go from there. It's like, okay. Dula comes over around three, um, and so when she gets there, she said, it's cool that, like, you're sitting in the rocking chair, but I'm leaning back. I'm not really, like, leaning forward to get the baby down. Uh Um, So she put me in two positions on the bed. One was facing the headboard Uh with the big ball Uh and kind of leaning forward. Uh Um, And then the other one was me laying on my side with the peanut ball. Uh-huh. So we did the first one, and she put the TENS machine on me, uh-huh. and that was everything. Like, <laughs> it was so good. Um, I wish I had it earlier because I probably would have slept mm-hmm. the past couple nights really well in the bed mm-hmm. if I had that, just going. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really, really liked that. Put me in that position, facing that way. I could feel the contractions getting more intense for sure and then I was like okay like my knees are starting to hurt because that bed is oh yeah it's hard isn't it it Mm. it's not hard but like your knees will like sink into Mm. it yeah and it's not really like firm Mm. um so my knees were starting to hurt so I was like hey can I lay on my side she was like yeah sure um and then I was laying on my side and was I clicking the button at that point, yeah. What's you were just... For the tens. Oh, for the tens. Like, to boost it yeah. when I have a contraction. What were you doing? Counter pressure? At that point? Uh, or no, you were just chilling. Yeah, I was just chilling. You were just chilling. Um, so, yeah. So, she got me in that position. And at that point, like, I was, like, moaning kind of loud. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... That was going, and then she started taking stuff down. I didn't know this at the time, but she was starting to take stuff down, and Chris goes, are we leaving? She was like, yeah, pretty soon. Like, we're going to be leaving. We're at the doula park. Pack the car. Pack the car. Um, So she, when she was here, she, like, put, like, little twinkle lights up. She put essential oils. I liked it. (laughs) Um, and Chris is like, what? <laughs> it was a candle, so it was like dim. Dim, yeah. Oh, okay. So it was like very like soothing. Uh-huh. Um, and so she started taking everything down. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she did that right when she got here. Mm-hmm. So like the scene was set. And she was, I guess she was assuming we're going to be here for a while just to have oh, okay. progression. Because that's why she set everything up. And how long was she here? Three, Three hours. hours. Oh, okay. So it wasn't too long. Um, and she asked me, she said, do you want to get to the birthing center and like kind of get your pace again? Or do you want to like walk into the birth center ready to push and deliver the baby? I said, "Mm, I'd like some time to like get settled in. She said, okay, then we got to (laughs) go. I was like, okay, cool. So packed everything up. And then this is where I probably shouldn't have done this, but I went to my mom and I said, Hey, we're going to the birth center. She, I said, you could stay in bed. We're just leaving right now. Oh, what time was it? 6.30. Oh, 
Oh, in the morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but oh, we've yeah. been up since. since two. You since yeah. two. Me since 4 p.m. The, the previous day. Uh, yeah. Um, so what did your mom say? She said, oh, okay. Jumps out of bed. And then Dula's here. She's like, oh, yeah, that's my daughter. She's in labor. And like, or she's talking to her like you. Like, she didn't know who you were. Oh, like, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> like, that's my daughter. And she's like, like you, yeah. Like, we met on the street. <laughs> <laughs> we just let her in the house. Yeah. That's well. She was probably half asleep when she was talking. But I told her, I prepped her. I said, "The doula is gonna come over and help us progress labor, so you will see a random person in the house." But I guess she was just out of it, anyways. So, um, my mom comes downstairs. Well, in the bed, she's like, "Okay, well, God bless you, yada yada." I'm like, "Okay, mom, I gotta go." Like. And she gets up, and then she's downstairs, and she's like, okay, I gotta, bl-. like, it's like, okay, we gotta go, we gotta go. <laughs> and then it was like, okay, now she's gonna be anxiety-ridden all day. I should have just texted her, because then she would have been up at, like, 9 o'clock. Oh. And then she would have had sleep, and yada, yada. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, so, when we get ready to go, I was like, Chris, just bring a trash can, just in case I puke on the way there, because I had just drank some protein shake and like I didn't know how it was gonna go um so on the way there it was good Chris was like do I take the tolls or no tolls I was like just do no tolls Mm -hmm. let's just go so how long how far away is the broken center like 35 40 minutes so I mean it is did the duel go with you she had her own car but yes oh okay yeah um so we were going and I mean it was enjoyable because it was just me and Chris and like in between contractions I like both of us were singing Mm -hmm. whatever (laughs) song was on the radio so we get to the birthing center the on-call midwife is there the one that I like Uh um it's seven o'clock she checks me and this is where like I was pumped she checks me and she's like yeah you're eight centimeters (gasps) and I'm like yes like (laughs) we're and this is where like, I think I pumped myself up too much. I was like, we're having this baby before noon. Like, we are doing this. Because I had made it by myself from zero to eight. Yeah. Like, no interventions, no, like, help or assistance. Okay, so this is seven in the morning? Mm-hmm. Okay. On the 15th. Okay. Okay. So, um, and, like, I'm going through contractions well the tens really helped i felt like i was managing the pain really well for me being at eight centimeters Mm -hmm. everything was going well and so again the doula set up the whole room with like the twinkle lights and the essential oils and i was like i had like a playlist that i made but it i was like if i don't use the playlist and i don't want to listen to music that's fine Mm -hmm. but I think from the car it was like that energy of like Mm -hmm. we're doing this (laughs) so I was like okay let's turn on my playlist and it has like three hours worth so I was like okay we'll hear everything maybe two times and we'll be good yeah 10-ish maybe nine or 10-ish uh the new midwife came in and the on call was leaving and the new (laughs) and you hadn't had the baby yet and I hadn't had the baby yet um because we've only been there for a couple hours Mm -hmm. so the next midwife she yeah she was in my top three Mm -hmm. but like I just knew she was gonna be rough on me Mm -hmm. um like when I saw her I was like she's not gonna (laughs) take any crap from me um and she's gonna push me Helga from Matilda yeah yeah like very (laughs) very stern very and so I was trying to get myself out of it because she was the one that did the tour for us when we first toured the birthing center. Uh So I'm trying to be positive and be like, oh, yeah, like it's a full circle moment. She was the first midwife that we saw. Uh And now she's going to be delivering the baby. Like I'm trying to get my mindset right of it's all okay. What the doula said is that she suggested it um, when they switched the midwives. 
saying, oh, like, if you don't progress in the next hour, then we're going to break. Like, I think we should break your water. Mm. And also the new midwife, when she came in, not only was I, like, intimidated by her um, to begin with, when she came in and I was going through a contraction, she goes, oh, like, it doesn't seem like you're eight centimeters just based on how you're coping through your contractions. <laughs> so it was kind of like, why are you talking to me that way? Like, apparently I am coping through them and I am eight centimeters. So like, what, what are you trying to get from me? In well, I think instant. maybe she was saying you're not, you might not be quite as far along as, as they first assessed you at. And at that because point, it's a subjective measurement. Yeah, yeah. But then when she checked me before she broke my water, she said, this is what the doula said. She said, oh, you're eight centimeters, but you're really close to a nine. Mm-hmm. So you did make progress. Mm-hmm. But I think we should still break your water. I didn't hear the first part of you made progress. I heard we need to break your water. Mm-hmm. And at that point, like, I started spiraling. Like, <laughs> we got to this point where... So you didn't want him to break your water? Oh. Like, How come you were afraid it was going to hurt? I was afraid it was going to hurt. And I felt as though he wasn't in the right position mm-hmm. to break my water. Mm-hmm. So it's like, why are we doing this when my body hasn't positioned him the right way Mm -hmm. and like the water breaks and he's in a decent position and we're ready to go Mm -hmm. I just felt like it was an intervention that didn't need to happen Mm -hmm. but I could tell that the energy in the room with the assistant midwife and the midwife it was we need to break your water because you're not progressing enough on our clock and if you're not going to go by our rules then we're going to send you somewhere else. That was just the vibe I got. Uh-huh. Did they break your water? Yeah. So I was on the Did bed. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the bed and like, they were like, okay, we're going to break your water. And I just start crying. <laughs> like, I am so upset. I don't want to do this. And like, I just felt like I had to at that point. What did you think, Chris? He's like, whatever. He... Did he, you feel when they broke your water? Like, did you feel that little pop? No, I didn't feel did a pop. I just felt a release of all okay. the fluid. Okay. Um, but no, I think Chris, at one point, well, when we were talking, you were like, yeah, I was looking at you like, I don't know why she's crying. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think it was just the mindset of, I've gone this far and my body has taken me this far. And I've been in labor since like Saturday night. So you were looking at the water breaking as, like, you're not doing the right thing. Not even that. It's, I'm being pushed for no reason. Oh, okay. Like, just let my, I've gone from zero to eight, and I did it from Saturday all the way till Wednesday so that morning. Was a long time to be in labor. <laughs> and that's fine, but I yeah. was fine. I yeah. was still eating. We were still going on walks. Uh-huh. We were, I couldn't sleep, but it was, I've gotten to this point. Yeah. And now you're kind of pushing me. And you're me. probably tired because you haven't slept. So I think it was that too, that that piece too. And then the anxiety of, okay, I'm about to push this child out. <laughs> it was just everything. And then going from my number one midwife to maybe second or third is kind of a letdown. Uh-huh. Me saying, okay, we're having this baby by noon and it's 11 o'clock. <laughs> so it was just like a lot of things going on all uh-huh. at once. Um, and so right before she broke it, she said, are you okay with this? Like, it doesn't seem like you're okay. Pushing pretty hard to do it. Yeah. They're pushing pretty hard to do it. And Uh it was like at that, I'm laying there in the bed, my legs spread open. They're about to break my, what am I going to say? Hook in hand. Yeah. Hook in hand. Are you sure you're okay? Like the hook is right there against the bag of water. You know what I'm saying? Are you sure you want me to? D- We're going to do it. Like, I said, <laughs> no, it's fine. And I think this was me just trying to cover up my emotions uh-huh. of, no, it's fine. I'm just nervous. Oh, okay. They break my water. It was fine. We get up. We go to the tub. Um, and this is where it just went haywire of 
Really? Yeah. Because it was like, they wanted me to progress so quickly that I wasn't listening to my body at all at that time. Uh-huh. And so the midwife was coaching me on how to push and how to moan and how to like, how to do it. But the past four days I've been doing it where my body was just doing it automatically. Uh-huh. And so she was like, uh, it. she just kept kind of telling me what I needed to do in that moment of, uh-huh. she would like push on like my perineum, like, and be like, this is where you need to push. This is where you need to push. And it's like, okay, if my body's not pushing like that, it's not pushing like that. I don't know what to tell you. At the same time, it was just, again, just progressing so quickly of, like, forcing me to do it. Uh-huh. Where it wasn't natural at that point. And so the doula said that it seemed like you were getting to the point of, like, you're transitioning, you're ready to push. Mm -hmm. But it was like, no, I wasn't because I was being coached Mm -hmm. on how to do that, where it wasn't coming automatically to me Mm -hmm. at all. Um, So we get in the tub, it was like, they put me in a couple different positions, one where like I'm laying on my side, one where I'm laying on my back, one where I'm facing Chris. Mm -hmm. So just a whole bunch of different ways spinning around in the tub for fun for fun for fun at that point she got a splish splash for having a bath yes exactly exactly um and it was like every 15 minutes the midwife would have to check his heartbeat and check my vitals and stuff so like i was getting annoyed of like how were they checking his heartbeat just listening on your abdomen uh the doppler putting it in the oh. water the doppler in the water yeah yeah <laughs> but like you heard the heartbeat and stuff yeah. and so it was like every time I would kind of change positions they're like okay we got to listen to baby's heartbeat and I'd be in a middle like in the middle of a contraction I'm like okay you got to give me at least one well, they wanted to make sure that I know that I know that he was not in distress I understand but like you just have to give me one contraction to like be like okay next like, after this contraction, let me hear the baby's heartbeat. Not, Just, let me hear the baby's heartbeat. Oh, okay. She wasn't yeah. doing it in sync with that. <laughs> yeah, couldn't wait, like, 60 seconds. Yeah. In either direction. <laughs> yeah. So, I think that's where the annoyance started coming in of... <laughs> she kept I think it's asking, normal to be annoyed when you're She kept around. asking you to, like, uh, can you... I know you're, like awkwardly positioned but can you reposition so i can get this yes and so it's like if you give me a minute head notice i'll do it like uh-huh. i'll flip around but when i say okay well let me finish this one and then i'll get to you it, it's annoying um and then also when you're trying to tell me how to do whatever you want me to do along with my body not doing it it was just getting very frustrating and as at a certain point i would see her come up and I would be like, okay, give, like, I wouldn't even say anything. I would just flip. And she'd be like, oh, thank you. And it's like, just give me some notice. <laughs> and so at a certain point, I was facing Chris in the tub. So Chris was on the outside. I was in the tub facing him. And I looked over to the side and the assistant midwife was sitting there with her laptop. And she kind of just like snarled at me. Like, that's weird. Like, that's how I felt the energy. Probably she just has a resting bitch face, but <laughs> I was thrown off. She, yeah. she seemed like she was, like, moon, like moonlighting as, like, she worked at a hospital. It seemed like she worked at a hospital, and on her off days, she would do this. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, so she, like, kind of looked at me. She's, she's kind of a person that's, like, um... If you take all my patients, I'll do. I'll write everyone's notes. I don't want to talk to anyone. <laughs> like she just seemed like that kind of person. Yeah, I. She didn't even introduce herself. So I don't know. I, I just felt her energy, and she just like I'm there, vulnerable in a tub, and she's sitting in a chair with her laptop, just looking <laughs> at me, and like I knew something was up. How long were you in the tub? Probably till like one o'clock. So got in no. Mm, yeah probably one o'clock so got in there around 11 
got out around one o'clock. The, then the, the assistant midwife and midwife are whispering. <laughs> That's annoying. So I'm over there like, oh, crap. Like, they're telling me. I mean, they're talking to each other saying, we're going to have to transport her to the <laughs> hospital. <laughs> they weren't saying that. But that's how I felt. Oh, okay. Uh, that's how I felt. And so they saw me look over, and they immediately get up and leave. So I'm like, oh, yeah, they were saying she's not progressing <laughs> fast enough. Sorry this is going to be in your recording, but I, I just heard something recently about, um, about maternity. Oh, it was on NPR, and they were talking about how the words, um, you know, make... Like, the word not progressing, when really it's just a failure to wait. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> that's it. That, no, that's perfect. That's exactly what, what it was. Yeah, it's like, per, it's like perspective outside of your own, mm-hmm. sort of. And, and, like, even all the, like, words about, you know, advanced maternal age and, you know, it's all, like, making... I mean, and failure to progress. It's like you're doing something wrong. You just didn't wait. For yeah. It to happen. Yeah, exactly. No, that's exactly how I felt through. Like, from the beginning of being at the birth center to the end, that's how I felt. Uh-huh. Um, actually, no, past that. Because there's a whole nother. After we delivered him, it was a whole thing of, like, y- you guys aren't waiting of what's happening. Or, like, acknowledging what's actually happening. Uh-huh. Um, okay, so we get out the tub, and I'm exhausted at this point, because they just told me to push when I didn't have to push at all. Yeah, you, mm-hmm. went, you went swimming for a couple hours. Yeah, I went. Wait, you were pushing in the tub? Yes. Pretty much. Yes. Like, yes. force yes. pushing. Like, my uh-huh. body wasn't pushing, it uh-huh. was me forcing myself to push. Uh-huh. Um, because she was, and, oh, I didn't even talk about this, we were in the tub, she checks me, and she goes, Okay, we're at a nine, but you have a, like, anterior lip. Uh Like, there's some more cervix that needs to be cleaned out. Um, So we need to do that on the next contraction. (laughs) And so she's literally sticking her hand up in me and scraping the cervix. And I flailed. So that hurts. I flailed. And I said, I just need a minute. And she goes, no, we need to do it now. And, like... I felt, oh, see, okay, he, see, he said, no, that's exactly what she said. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> traumatic. Very traumatic. Traumatic. And so, like, I was literally flailing. Like, I was trying to swim away from her. And she said, no, we got to do it now. And I think after that, it was like, I just felt like I was a specimen of everyone and like mm-hmm. felt very like out of control of, mm-hmm. I'm not being heard from the midwives and like, they don't really trust what I'm doing and what my body's doing. Mm-hmm. So it just really threw me off and like, it made me feel like I just don't want them to touch me as like at all like minimum Mm. touching at this point like yeah you could check my vitals and everything but when I say I need a minute like you just saw me go through a contraction at eight centimeters and I was chill so when I say I need a minute I need a minute like I'm not being a baby Mm -hmm. I made it to eight centimeters I'm not being a baby when I say I need a minute Mm -hmm. and she just didn't do it um which kind of sucked but it's part of the the story i guess um so then we get out of the the tub we go to the toilet and so i'm facing the wall like straddling the toilet leaning forward chris is pushing on my back and like nothing's happening like i feel like nothing's happening at a certain point i get up and chris goes do you feel any progression like do you feel like you're making headway and i said no (laughs) <laughs> like, it's over. I just want him here. It's done. Like, I pretty much told Chris that we're going to end up at the hospital. Oh. Like, I was so defeated. And, like, I don't know what Chris said. Did you? Do you remember what you said? I don't. I, <laughs> I feel I like you didn't say anything. <laughs> you didn't know what to say. 
Um, but I felt like it's over. Like, we're going to the hospital. It is what it is. Even though we could have been there for 24 hours, at least. Yes, yeah, I know. Oh, you can stay there for 24 hours? So you'd only been there for, like, six yeah. at this point. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but at a certain point, the midwives could always say, hey, you're not progressing, you got to head out. Yeah. So that's where the, the anxiety came in of, okay. I never know when they're going to pull the plug and say, you got to get out. Um, so at that point, I was so exhausted Hadn't slept, getting close to hitting the 24-hour mark. No, you weren't. One o'clock? But I thought you got there no, at no, 6 no, in the morning. At the birthing center. No, 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 no. Sleeping, sleeping. Oh, okay. Sleeping, sleeping. yeah. Okay. Um, I was so exhausted. Then we get off the toilet. We go, um, like, beside the bed. I'm, like, hanging on Chris and trying to like kind of squat down uh-huh. and they like put a mirror below me and they're looking to see if the baby's coming down. That wasn't a good position. We did some more lunges, like leg lunges. Uh-huh. And then finally we get in the bed and Chris is behind me, like straddled. Uh-huh. I'm there straddled. And then now it's everyone's propping my legs up uh-huh. and forcing me to push. And so that's where it feels like a hospital now. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, put my legs in stirrups and mm-hmm. let, let's let go. So, again, it just didn't feel natural to me. Um, and it felt very forced. Did they give me herbs already? Okay. What are the herbs for? So it's pretty much just a shot of alcohol. Uh, <laughs> no, what is it called? It's a uh, cotton root. So, like, it's for... So did it taste Induced like alcohol? Con- yes. You drank it? Yes. Induced oh, okay. contractions. Yeah. Oh, I never heard of that. Okay. Yeah, so every so 15 minutes. Induced contractions, but you were already having contractions. But more intense, oh, okay. consistent contractions. Um, and so... So they gave her that. They gave me two rounds of it. Two rounds. And then okay. they're and like, get some, go ahead and get some sleep now. You give some, gave cause, something. Yeah, because I'm literally laying there like dead. Like a dead fish. Chris is behind me. Like, I literally just felt like this. <laughs> um, but the contractions were still coming. And they said, okay, well, get some rest. We're going to set you up on the peanut ball of what you did earlier um, to bring the baby down. Okay, cool. And, and it's not like it's been an hour since they gave her no. the cotton root. It was like they gave her it, and then they gave her a second round 15 minutes later. And then 15 minutes after that second round... They're like, okay, now get some rest. But did your contractions start getting stronger? Oh, they were intense. Even after, like, she delivered Vincent, like, I mentioned, I was like, you guys realize that, like, you gave her a bunch of cotton root and then told her to go to sleep. And then you guys left the room. You realize you did that, right? (laughs) And what'd they say? They're like, no, we didn't. (laughs) Yeah, so, um, oh, okay, but before that, when I was on my back, that's when the catheter situation happened, right? Catheter? Yes. Like a urinary catheter? Yes. So They put one in? So they thought that... Um, they wanted to empty your bladder. Yes. It's The bladder is full, so you, you weren't able to empty your bladder? She literally just got off the toilet. I got off the toilet. Okay, so and your bladder was empty. I mean, sometimes the position of the baby can make it hard to empty the, your bladder. The, and yes, and that's what they said. And they said, okay, well, your bladder's full. You need to yes, go they, use the... they told Bianca that her bladder was full. full. And that she needed... So they were telling her... But you stuff. can... I mean, they can kind of feel your bladder on the outside. Well, the they didn't cool. feel it very well. And they, sh- they should have done that. <laughs> so they go, you need to go use the toilet. And so I'm over there walking to the toilet, sitting there, like... Yes, I'm drinking water, but I was on the toilet 30 minutes ago, and I have nothing... And they're watching me to make sure I'm emptying my bladder. And they go, well, you didn't empty your bladder. I guess we got to do a catheter. And so I'm laying on the bed again in like a very vulnerable position. And they put the catheter in. And again, I started flailing because I... It's a little comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did, did you have anything in there? No. It was empty. Pretty, pretty, much, pretty much empty. They, like I saw that it was empty. And the doula. doula saw that it was empty, but I mean, I didn't want to say anything to Bianca. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> Bianca had vocally insisted that 
there was nothing in her bladder like multiple times before and they did that anyway yeah. and that's not a good look that's not a good look and so let me pause because we're shitting on the um, birthing center so much at the end of the day Chris and I made the right decision on going to the birthing center because we took out so many. It it sounds bad in perspective. Yes, yes. But we took out so many other interventions that could have happened. Mm -hmm. Think about a hospital. Oh, you want Pitocin? Oh, you want an epidural? Like, let me turn on these LED lights. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, we took out as many interventions, interventions as we could for our first time. Once you do it and you know you can do, do it, it yeah. then there's a, there's, and then you choose to do it, there's like a level of confidence. There. Yes. Yeah. And then your body already knows how to do it. Yeah. Like now I know what pushing, like the urge to push feels like. Mm-hmm. It wasn't when I was in the tub. It was eventually when I was in the bed. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, there's many factors. But Chris and I, at the end of the day, I'm glad we went with this birthing center. Mm-hmm. Of course, the delivery is the most important part of this whole experience, and we are shitting on it a bit, (laughs) but like I said, after... All the appointments were great, all the... All the appointments were great, all the midwives, yeah, we didn't vibe with some of them, but all of them wanted the best for us and for Vincent, and Uh every time we left the... Look, I'm getting goosebumps. Every time we left an appointment, it was... I felt good Mm -hmm. compared to the OBGYN of... We went there starting at six weeks all the way up to 20 weeks. I was pissed off every time we left. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I wasn't listened to. No information was given to me. She was definitely doing things because she could, not because she knew how to do them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we made the right decision of going to a birth center, going to that birth center, delivering there. Everything happened how it happened. Mm -hmm. Do I wish it was different? Because I had a different vision for his birth. Yeah. Um, But I think we made the right choices of everything. Yeah, the OBGYN was terrible. Yeah. We would wait in the patient room for an hour. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so, like, you'd sit in the waiting room for 30 minutes. So you did your your, your, um, prenatal visits with with the birthing center, too? starting at 20 weeks on oh, okay. um for the first 20 weeks i did it with the OBGYN because i was kind of nervous of uh-huh. what was happening um and i think once we hit 20 weeks it was like okay let me go uh-huh. the birthing center that we looked at for my first pregnancy they said they were booked out all the way till april uh-huh. at t- when um i was 20 weeks uh-huh. so this birthing center um Again, is more hospital like um, because they do take insurance. Mm-hmm. Where the first one, you kind of have to do your own self insurance mm. piece of it. It wasn't that much. It's only like what maybe five five thousand, no, no, which no. is the same as that other mm-hmm. one. Yeah. This one, they put all the Three claims. Yeah. yeah, so it was more hospital like mm-hmm. um, compared to the first one. But again. That's what we went with. Okay, sorry. So going back mm-hmm. to... So right after the, the catheterization. Yeah. That's when they did... They hide it. They, they, tried, they tried really hard to hide it. But, like, when you use a catheter, like, you can't really hide. They just did a straight catheter. Yeah, just straight, in and straight, out, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And see, I had no concept of what was... I Like, I knew what was happening, but I was more, un, like, scared, annoyed anxiety ridden of again you're doing something that i just told you my body has emptied Uh and then in my head i'm saying i'm not i can't even release my pee right now how am i supposed to push a baby out you know what i'm saying of it's a mind game they were trying to they're still just trying to move it along you know and if this was one of the factors that was keeping it from then they had to do it Yeah. yeah going forward they gave me the two shots they set me up they said okay you need to rest they leave the room and so at that point like me chris and the doula our energies like like all of us were in sync the whole time like i just relaxed Uh and i was pushing on my own Uh and (laughs) like i wasn't trying to make any noise or anything (laughs) 
I was just, okay, let me just do my thing. Everyone just leave me alone. Let me do my thing. Because now the contractions are really intense. Uh And now I feel the urge to push. Uh Um, And so I heard the doula go, Bianca, do I need to call the midwives? It seems like you're pushing. I didn't say anything. (laughs) Oh, it keeps scaring him. Um, I didn't say anything. And she asked me like three or four times. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say anything because I didn't want them back in the room. Like I would have been just dandy if I delivered the child without them in the room. That's how over I was with them intervening with my body. Um, so then finally I heard like when you click the little button to call them, it's like ding, 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 ding. And so I heard her click it and I was like, damn it. Oh wait. So before that, um, sorry, we're jumping all around. But before that, uh, <laughs> it was just me, Chris, and the doula there. They left the room. And she goes, hey, like, do you want me to go get food? Because, like, you need some nourishment. Like, you're running on empty right now. So, like, maybe I could get some food in you before you start pushing. And it could just give you a boost. And I'm over here thinking she's going to go run to, like, a drive through <laughs> Like... <laughs> And I I, I said, you can't leave me. You can't leave me. She said, no, 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 no. Like the soup you guys brought, I could heat it up. I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. I literally thought she was going to be leaving. I'd like to go. (laughs) Let me go to Taco Cabana. (laughs) Something. I was so scared. And it was a funny moment. But I just did not want her to leave. Because it was me, Chris, and her were locked in. Like we were Mm -hmm. making progress. Whenever the midwives came in the room, the doula said that I would be quiet and I wouldn't be moaning and do going through my normal contractions, how I normally went mm-hmm. through, because it was just the pressure of them being in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess I just instinctually just didn't want them to be involved. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so she calls the button. They come in and then it was kind of go time of now we're pushing And I was leaning on my side and like the midwife had my foot up here. My other foot was down below and I would push. And I felt like I was actually making progress and pushing. And every 15 minutes they would give me another shot. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. And so they kept saying, okay, this is your last shot. And then your baby will be here. And then the next time it was... Well, this is the last shot. Your baby will be here. So it was like every time I knew it was 15 minutes. So I knew every 15 minutes I was... So how long were you pushing? Two hours? No. Yeah, mm, two hours. Mm. Maybe two and a half. Mm. Um, And when I would push, I would bear down and my nose would get stuffy (laughs) the first time. I would bear down. So when I would try to and try to bear down again, I couldn't inhale. I should have been inhaling from my mouth, but I was inhaling from my nose. Mm-hmm. And so when I would go again, I would be getting lightheaded. Oh. And so it was just so much happening. And Chris kept going, Bianca, breathe. Like, <laughs> Bianca, breathe. Um, but I just couldn't. Like, because I, I wanted to suck in through my nose, but my nose was stuffy. Um, every time I would bear down the first time. Uh Um, and then when we started getting to the point of like, okay, he's about to be delivered. I kept telling everyone in between contractions, I don't want to pass out. I don't (laughs) want to pass out. And they were like, well, just breathe. And I'm like, no, it's not that easy. I just don't want to pass out, but I need to push him out. Um, but yeah. You pass out a lot? No, I've never passed out. (laughs) But like, I could tell you're starting to feel dizzy yeah Mm -hmm. it was bit it was bad like i i could tell that i was about to be gone (laughs) Mm -hmm. um and i didn't want to like wake up and my baby's there and like i didn't experience it um so yeah so at that point we were getting close and the assistant midwife was trash like she wasn't doing anything chris was doing more to assist the midwife than the assistant midwife. Mm-hmm. And so at a certain point, I knew the doula was going to be taking video. I knew Chris wanted to catch the baby. Mm-hmm. So like one person was pressing on my back and the other person, Chris and the doula, 
was hitting the tens machine mm-hmm. when I said contraction. So Chris was pushing on my back. The baby was about to be delivered. I knew they had to flip. I knew the doula had to record because I wanted her to record the birth. So I said, hey, midwife, can you get that girl over there, the assistant midwife, to push on my back when I'm delivering the baby? She said, oh, you won't need that when you're delivering the baby. <laughs> yeah. she's like, it was like she's like, um, she didn't want to get her gloves dirty. Yeah. She was wearing gloves to hand Bianca the little, like, cup. <laughs> That's all she was doing. Yeah. That's all she was doing. The- so, like, yeah, I'm not going to take another shot when the kid's coming out of my hoo-ha. <laughs> like, push on my back. Yeah. But, again, it was, oh, no. Let's not listen to your body and what you're asking for. Uh-huh. You're going to be good. By the-, the, the, the assistant said, oh, no, you won't need that. Yeah. But you didn't ask the assistant. Yeah, yeah. So, it was, like, very frustrating at that point. Okay, so we get to the point of, okay... He's there. And so I could find I could feel the stretching of everything, but it wasn't well, it was very uncomfortable. I wouldn't say it was painful. Mm-hmm. I feel like <laughs> all of their interventions and all of them doing everything to me, even though I told them not to or that I was good, was more painful than me actually delivering him. Mm-hmm. So I guess it prepped me in a good way. <laughs> uh-huh. um, so then I hear her before that. She said, oh, let's put a mirror there so she could see. And then the midwife goes, oh, yeah, I don't think she wants to see the baby's head come out. And th- at that point, no, I don't. <laughs> because I was just so overwhelmed with everything. Uh-huh. So then I push him and I feel like his head come out and she goes oh the head is out and then i've seen so many videos of the head coming out and like the baby's fine like just wait till the next contraction and then the rest of the body will come out i get so freaked out when i see videos like that like oh no the baby's not okay the baby's okay but when she said the head was out i was like i don't care if i i have a contraction or not he's coming out right now and so I'll show you the video. I'm fine with you seeing it because I'm pretty proud of myself. But I like, (laughs) I pushed him out and Chris got him and then put him on my chest. And I think that's where like all of the relief of the past nine months of like me thinking like he wasn't going to be here just like released from my body. And you'll see in the video, like I want to scream, but like, I don't want to scare him or, like, scare anyone else. But it was, like, ah! like, I was, like, so excited. And I looked at Chris. And he looked at me. And, like, it was just, like, it's hap- Like, it, it has happened. And, like, it feels so good that, like, he's here. And it was, like, a full, like, even in the moment during my first pregnancy that morning when I took my pregnancy test, um, I had a dream that I was sitting in a car with like my big belly and it was a boy and like I knew it was a boy look at look at <laughs> and so like having him on my chest and like seeing him and feeling him and knowing that like Chris was there to deliver him and everything was there like it just felt right and it felt so good that he was there but like getting through that knowing that we did it and we were in sync the whole time once i told him to clock in we were good <laughs> like we were in sync um but it was just a relieving moment um that he was here and he's perfect yeah and he's perfect and of course in my annoying way uh i had him and i said i'm so sorry i'm so <laughs> sorry this took so long like are you kidding me? An extra three hours? Like, he's so fine. What time was he for? 327. Oh, okay. So that's not bad. That was only eight hours. That's I know. <laughs> but yet, I'm over there saying sorry to him. And he's fine. Like, he's breathing. <laughs> he's good. Um, so, yeah. So, that happened. Uh, we... Yeah, I delivered the placenta. He cuts the cord. Um, and then from there, it was a lot of breastfeeding, um, 
And then it was kind of like cleanup time of like, okay, I get out of bed. He was doing skin to skin with him. Mm-hmm. And it was like at that point, I didn't want anyone to touch me. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. So deliver the baby. I go to my back and I deliver the placenta. And the midwife goes, oh, I don't think, or you didn't tear. And so I'm like, yes, no stitches. We're good. Mm-hmm. And then a little bit later, she was like, well, I think you didn't tear. Let me check. So you just told me I didn't tear when I delivered the placenta. Now you're you're saying you think I didn't tear. Like, it was just, again, back and forth of, like, just tell me what's happening. Mm-hmm. So she said, you have a tiny little micro tear on, like, your right labia, but it looks like it's already kind of healing itself. She said, I could put a stitch or two, but it's already healing itself. There, it's really... Mm-hmm. not need it. I was like, nope, we're good. We're good. You're not touching me anymore. Um, so I, I didn't tear, which mm-hmm. was pretty awesome. And when I delivered him, I was so lightheaded that I was looking at everyone with one eye. Like I was like this, <laughs> looking at everyone and talking to everyone. And so when they said I didn't tear, instantly I go, that was him. That was him. Because <laughs> he was doing the perineum massages. Uh, okay. uh-huh. And were you embarrassed? No. No. But, it, like, a bunch of females, and I'm over there, like, he did that. Like, <laughs> he prepped me for this, yada, yada. Um, but, yeah, so didn't tear. Just the tiniest tear, but no stitches. Um, and then it was cleanup time. I go to the shower. No, they say, okay, you got to go pee. <laughs> okay? They send me in there with no peri bottle. You know, like the little, yeah, yeah. no peri bottles. So like, I'm out of it. And like, I know you're supposed to use a peri bottle after you give birth, but I'm just trying to sit and pee. Cause at that point, I don't even want to ask questions uh-huh. to them. Um, and I try and I go, no, this ain't going to happen. I said, can I have like, hello, can I have a bottle or something? Oh yeah. I'm so sorry. Let's get you a peri bottle. Okay, cool. So I'm squeezing the peri bottle. I'm peeing. I know I'm peeing. There's like a little cup in the toilet, but I didn't pee in the cup because I said, do I have to pee in this cup? They go, no, just pee in the toilet. It's okay. I'm peeing. I'm squeezing the peri bottle. I emptied the peri bottle because I just gave birth probably two hours ago. Mm -hmm. I peed. And she goes, no, you didn't pee. You just squeezed the peri bottle there. I saw you do it. Yeah, I saw you do, I saw you squeeze the bottle and yeah, no pee came out. I'm sorry my pee isn't like bright highlighter yellow. My pee is clear. So like yeah, you're not going to see yellow. And I've been drinking water the whole time. So what did they do? They go, "Well, you still need to pee before you leave, so start chugging water um because we need to see you pee before you leave." Even though I just peed. <laughs> and, and at that point, I didn't know the catheter situation at all. So wait, they were going to give you another catheter? No, 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 no. I didn't know about the first catheter. Oh, that it was empty. That it was empty. Um, so I said, okay, I guess I didn't pee. I know I peed, but I guess I didn't. <laughs> I take a shower. And at that point, I don't want anyone to touch me at all. Um, so, like, I rinse myself off. I get the, like, spray head, I rinse myself off, whatever. And she's trying to help me, but, like, I just don't want the help at this point. Uh And, uh, she, like, I'm thinking I'm going to get to wash my hair because (laughs) I've been in a pool of... The the fluid tub? The fluid tub. Uh No, no, didn't wash my hair. Like, I was going to rinse my body, wash my hair, and rinse my body again. Because, like... Oh, they didn't let you do that? They, once I rinsed my body, she was like, okay, you're good. And my hair's all... I was like, whatever, I don't care at this point. <laughs> um, and so, like, I'm kind of not really drying my legs. And then I'm putting on my underwear. Like, the Depends underwear, pretty much. Oh, yeah. And she said, you know, like, when you... Um, your legs are wet and you put your jeans on and they stick. That's what you're doing. Let me dry your legs. I was like, okay, whatever. Like, she was just being belittling of everything. She's like, I, I know you're a mom, but I could help you. <sighs> she was so annoying. Um, 
so then I get dressed, I come out, then we're just hanging out for a little bit. Um, he ate, I ate, oh, after I delivered, cause my doula got the soup ready, uh-huh. but it wasn't in time before I started pushing. Okay. And so once I delivered him, she ran, heated up the soup and it was the soup that Audrey made before uh-huh. she left. That was the best meal <laughs> of my life. Of my life, like, and she put a lot of pepper in it, and I love pepper. Uh-huh. So I was literally there with him on my chest, and my doula was feeding me that soup, that <laughs> stew. Oh, it was so good. Um, but, yeah, so then the next couple hours, they came in. They weighed him. He was 8 pounds, 5 ounces. 8 by 5. 8 20 inches long. Um uh, Yeah. And so everyone was like, oh, how much do you think he weighs? And both of us said seven pounds, whatever ounces. And everyone else was looking at us like, that's an eight-pound baby. Like, <laughs> he's not no seven-pound baby. And I was like, no, he, he's probably seven pounds. Like, how much were you when you were born? Seven, seven. Oh. Do you know how much you were? Seven. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, so. so you peed before they weighed you. You would have been eight pounds if. He didn't pee before they weighed him. He pooped, like, two times? Yeah, he pooped, yeah. Before they weighed him? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, he was probably pushing it. Um, but, yeah, so, at that point, we were just hanging out. They were coming in to check on him, come to check on me. Mm-hmm. And then, at a certain point, they were telling me, okay, you got to feel for oh. your, your fundus. Your, oh, yeah, your fundus, the top of your... Your uterus. Yeah. And so they said, okay, you check. And I go, okay, it's right here. And then the assistant midwife goes, uh, midwife, is it right here? And the midwife goes, Bianca, it's right here where I pressed. And I said, yes, that's what I told the assistant midwife. Like, I oh, Maybe po- she's learning. She's been there for four months, I think. Oh. She should know better. And she said she was Air Force Medical. What does that mean? Like, it did, it was like a medic in the Air Force. Oh, so that's not a nurse. That's not a nurse, but she said she worked in a hospital. Oh. Well, okay. So so they want you to find your fundus because you're not going to be in the hospital yeah, for yeah. them to check it. So they want you to check it at home, make and, sure that yes. it's, yeah. And so I found it. But again, second, so, people second so guessing what the, I'm doing. The uh-huh. assistant told her what she needs to do because they can't check it. So when she asked the assistant, "Am I doing it right?" the assistant said, "I don't know." She oh. just she just read the list, and when someone asked her to explain oh. it, <laughs> yeah, they weighed him, checked him. We hung out. I think that's when we called you. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Then we called Mr. Hamilton, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Chris took a nap because I was like, "You need to sleep for at least like thirty minutes before you drive us home." <laughs> um, And so then that's when the assistant midwife came in and said, okay, well, we need to go down this checklist. And Chris is snoring up a storm on the bed. He's out. And so I'm over there, Chris, Chris. And I, like, I don't want to get up. Oh, and in the shower, like, during this time frame, I was a little dizzy. But, like, I at that point, I didn't want to say anything. (laughs) Because I didn't want them to intervene with everything. I just kept eating and drinking and stuff. Because... I was over it. I just wanted to go home. Mm -hmm. Um, And I knew I was going to be okay. If I wasn't going to be okay, I would have said something. But even if I slightly said, oh, I'm a little dizzy, it probably would have tailed spin (laughs) into something else. So I didn't want to say anything. Did you know she was dizzy? She seemed fine. Yeah. And he would have noticed something if Mm -hmm. something was wrong. So, um, So, yeah. Uh, so she comes in, she's like, okay, well, we need to go through this with you. And I'm over there, Chris, 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 with him, him here, um, with Vincent on my lap. And I said, just go over there and kind of shake him. And so she goes over and shakes him and she said, you need to listen to this, yada, yada. He comes over, sits down and then, uh, he's on his phone and she goes, Hey, you, you need to listen to this talking to him (laughs) hey you (laughs) if i had the energy i would have called her out don't be saying hey you 
to mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. Or to I, anyone, really. To uh, anyone, really, but still. Um, so he, uh, uh, she went through the list, and at a certain point, she wasn't making any sense. And Chris just starts getting up and packing the bags. <laughs> yeah, just ignoring her. Yeah. And it was just... She was she was like, oh, yeah, sorry, I've been here all day. And she's looking at me that just pushed a child out. All day. All day. <laughs> for several days. Jeez. Um, but, yeah, so finally the other... The main midwife comes and just goes, oh, have you peed yet? No. Okay, well, go pee. I literally sit down, and I have the peri bottle like this. And I don't squeeze it on anywhere. I just stare at her while I pee. You should have squeezed some on the floor. I should have, but <laughs> I literally just stared at her, dead in her eyes, and just peed. And not okay. squeezed the peri bottle at all. She goes, oh, good job. Good job. Okay, you did pee. <laughs> She's like, okay, well, you guys could leave around 7.30. Well, by the time the assistant midwife gets through fumbling over everything. Oh, yeah. Uh. And we change him and we, we're ready to go. It's already 9.30, which is the normal time of when we were supposed to leave. Mm-hmm. So, again, don't tell me I'm leaving by 7.30 and it's 9.30 now. Mm. Hi. But, yeah. So, we get home, walk in the door, and I told my mom. Like, I called her maybe a week before she came and laid out, like, all of the, not the rules, but, like, this yeah, is you're gonna do it. this is the expectation because I know her. And if I didn't say this, it would have been me coming in, I just delivered this child, and her going, <laughs> and it's like, no, like, just give me some time to sit in my house mm-hmm. with him and chill out. I was nice. I was very nice. We get upstairs. I I clocked the time because I took a video of us walking in the house. And then I took a picture of her holding him. Nine minutes apart of (laughs) we get in the house. We come over here. She sits down. I have him here. I go, do you want to hold him? Yes. She held him within nine minutes. (laughs) And then I go, okay, can I have him back? This is where she messed up. She goes, no, you've been holding him all day. And I was like, <laughs> let me just lay here because I am I have no energy to deal with this. Um, but yeah, and I texted her before we came home because I all, like, my whole face was bursted with, like, blood vessels because uh, I was pushing, pushing. too hard. Uh-huh. And then my eyes, like, the insides were all red. Yeah. Yeah. And so I told her, I said, I look pretty bad, so don't freak out when I come home. Did she freak out? No. Okay. Probably because I told her. <laughs> I didn't think she looked at you. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right about that. Um, but yeah, that was that whole day. Well, good job. Thanks. Thanks. It was a journey, but we did it. 